Welcome to another video on my home automation playlist. This is going to be the first video where I am reviewing a product which was sent by Banggood. So first of all, thanks for Banggood for sponsoring uh, my channel by sending some products that I can review. And I choose to review this uh, Blitzwolf Smart Plug SHP2. I did review Blitzwolf products in the past. These were mostly, you know, chargers and phone accessories. And since then, Blitzwolf also released their line of smart home products. So I was quite happy because I'm personally using a lot of Blitz, uh, Blitzwolf products. So I have a lot of different chargers and power banks and selfie sticks and, and I'm quite happy with it. And I was quite happy to know that they also ventured into the smart home product. And instead of um, developing their own ecosystem, they choose to use the Tuya or the Smart Life app or the, well, that's the ecosystem. So these products are going to be compatible with either the Tuya Smart or the Smart Life app, which means that yet another manufacturer is choosing to uh, support this ecosystem. So the number of products that you can use with these apps are going to increase even further. I like this product for many different reasons. First of all, um, even though I know that Sonoff has a similar products, but this is the first time actually reviewing this sort of smart plugs where, yeah, you don't need any wiring. You just uh, put it into your wall outlet and then whatever device that you plug in here is going to be controllable. The other thing what I also like about this one, that besides controlling this device, it can also measure the voltage, the current and the power consumption of the device. So that's definitely nice, even if you are only using it to monitor the power consumption of your device. But the really big selling point for me on this device that you can use these values in the automation function in the Tuya Smart App. And this was something that I really missed in the past when I reviewed the son of uh, POW, but this unit can do it. And I think that's quite nice because you can do some really nice automation when it comes to power. Like if something consumes too much power, maybe turn it off, uh, run, uh, send notification, or you know do something else. So I'm going to give you an example how you can use the automation function to give you a notification that the washing has finished. So I'm using this uh, device connected to my washing machine and I could set up a logic inside the Tuya Smart App that it gives me a notification at the end of the wash. So that's quite nice. And it seems to be working quite reliably. Probably the only cons that I can think of is that once we go into the app, we will see that some of the texts in the app are not probably perfect. And even in the automation functions, I can uh, see something which, well, it doesn't make a lot of sense and the documentation doesn't say anything about that. But the basic functionality works and we can still use the power, the voltage and the amp settings to do something, you know, really smart. If you look at the spec side, we just turn it over. You can see that it is designed for multi-voltage, even though this uh, European plug is, well, it's only going to be 240 volts. The other important um, uh, metric of this one is the maximum load is 16 amps. So this is a, you know, rather beefy unit. I mean, it looks, you know, physically quite, well, to some extent quite large as well. But um, that's the good thing because it really, you know, is designed to power some of your power hungry devices. So for example, washing machine or a dryer. Uh, so probably some of the smaller units would just have a 10 amp uh, relay. So yeah, if you want to use it for something bigger, then probably you should go for this one with the 16 amp one. Other than that, as you can see, it comes in a, in a box. And in a box, we are just getting two small things. Um, just like with any Blitzwolf products, you are getting this uh, feedback form, really fine print, small letters, but that's basically just uh, how you can come back to them if you have any feedback. And it also states here that uh, all Blitzwolf products come with a 18 month manufacturer warranty. So besides this leaflet, we are getting a user manual, which appears quite thick, but it is only thick because it has five different languages. So the same stuff is on five different languages and most of the setup uh, is uh, duplicated because it tells you how you can do the setup in the Tuya Smart App and how you can do the setup in the Smart Life App. I mean, yeah, they are pretty much the same. Of course, the UI is different, but yeah, that's pretty much it. But this document doesn't go into the details. It's really just, you know, how you set it up and how to use the basic functionality in the app. It doesn't talk anything about the automation, which I would like to focus a little bit more because I think this is 
the really value added part when it comes to any of these uh, smart home products. As I said, using this device is not really rocket science. You plug it in and it works. So you have an indicator light on the top, which would uh, flash blue. Uh, for example, it would, it would do quick blue flashes when it's in pairing mode. So if you take it out of the box uh, for the first time, then obviously it's not connecting to any uh, internet. So you just uh, you know, start a pairing process, add as a new device in the Tuya, and then you follow the on-screen on instructions. And then once you have it connected, then it has an indicator, which is red at the moment because the outlet is on. And if you press, then, well, the indicator light is off, which means that the outlet is off. We will see it in the app, but there is no functionality to set the power on state. But what I have noticed is that it remembers what the last state was when it was powered on. So, it, uh, so if you turn it on and if you unplug it, once you pl plug it back in and once it starts up, which is like one or two seconds, it will turn itself on. And that is a very nice feature because if I, you don't want to use it as a smart plug as what I mean is that the device that you you have in here you don't really want to turn it on and off but you want to use it for um, power consumption measurement then if the power goes out and if it comes back then the outlet will be on again. Let's have a quick look of the Banggood listing of the SHP2. As you can see it is 1299 at the moment and it mentions here that it works with Alexa, Google Home, as, uh, Google Assistant and the Tuya app and the Blitzwolf app. So I, I think I mentioned in the video that it's for Tuya and, and Smart Life and Blitzwolf decided not to create its own ecosystem. But we are going to see later on that actually there is a Blitzwolf app. Uh, so you see the main specs and yeah, works with Alexa and Google Home. And they are giving this example that you can control your AC using this, which is I think it's a very stupid example because nowadays all ACs require a uh, a remote control so if you just plug it in nothing really happens I mean it comes sort of like in standby mode it's not going to turn on well as far as I know because uh, I don't have an AC but anyway I think it's a uh, yeah it's a reasonable concept and they also mention about the electricity monitoring which is fine I think it's a great great feature and now they talk about the Blitzwolf app and by the looks of it it looks like a rebranded to your smart life app Maybe they have paid a little bit more attention to the text. So instead of electric, it's that statistics, which I think it's probably more reasonable. But like this screen is, is the same screen as, as we would see in the Tuya. And um, yeah, but yeah, that's fine. You can use any of the apps that you fancy. I think if you only have Blitzwolf product, you might as well just use the Blitzwolf app. But if you have other uh, Tuya products as well, you just use the Tuya Smart or the Smart Life app. And yeah, Amazon Control. They do mention that it's not compatible with the French plug system, which, yeah, straight away. Uh, so if you have the Earth drawn here in the middle, then, well, there is no hole for that. So it's, it's more like the, like the German or Central Europe, Eastern Europe, and then, uh, you know, those markets where you have the Earth prone on the side. You know, we also get some exploded diagrams. It doesn't mention the IP rating of this device, but it says that if it's played, uh, plays outdoors, then it should be shattered for the, from the rain. So I'm guessing it's something below IP44. So yeah, just be aware if you are pl uh, placing it outside. And again, we are getting the, uh, the main rating here, so 16 amp. So that's about 3,800 watts. As I said, I'm not going to show the entire pairing process, but if you just plug it in, once you get it out of the box, you click on the plus button on the top right, and then you say socket, so the first one, and it says is the indicator light flashing like this, which it will, and then you just, well, follow the instruction. Confirm, indicator rapidly, rapidly blink, and then you need to provide your Wi-Fi credentials and then just wait for a few minutes, and it will be added to your uh, setup. And as you can see, it is this washing machine, SHP2, and I can operate it from here. So when you are in the device list in the UI, you are also getting an on-off switch, which is quite nice because you don't have to go into the details screen, which again, it looks very simple. Again, you have a big button here, so you can operate the switch like that. And you have the usual functions and the, and the button. So you have a power button, which acts just like the main you know, face on the, on the screen. You have the timer functionality. 
So that is where you can add different schedules when you want this device to turn on or turn off. And you can also specify a cycle when this should happen on which day of the week and then you save. So you can have schedules here and you can also set up a countdown. So if you switched it on, but you want, you know that you have, you want to switch it off after, let's say one hour, you can just set a countdown manually. So this is going to be just a one time countdown. And of course the, the new functionality or the special functionality of this smart plug is the fourth button, which says electric. And if you click on this one, it's going to take you to another screen, which is going to show you all the statistics about the electricity usage. It's not going to be a huge amount of details because on the first screen, you see what is the current well, voltage, what is the current, uh, well, current and the power consumption, and what is the total electricity used today. So as you can see here, well, some of the, the words appear to be unfinished. Maybe it's just because of the, um, uh, the the space available on the screen, but um, yeah, that's what you get. So it's only going always going to show you the uh, the usage uh, today. And so today, I just unplugged it from my washing machine, and I believe uh, we have done a washing today. So we have used 0.46 kilowatt hours of electricity. I thought it would be more, but maybe it's not. And besides the daily usage, you can also click on the month here on the list. Again, it says SEPT, but there is enough space for the whole month, so I don't, I don't know why they had to abbreviate like that. Um, I only got this device just a few days ago, so I don't have a lot of history, but of course, if, if I have used it in August as well, then I would have an option for August and then one for September. So I can see that in September, I've used 3.77 kilowatt hours, and this is how much I used in every single day. So you're just getting a simple graph and yeah, the total electricity consumption for September. Again, English is terrible. Electrical quantity for September and kilowatt hours is kwh and not kw.h, but hey ho. Well, honestly, that's pretty much it when it comes to the device settings. And into the device details, you can uh, check the name, you can set the location. So you put it into a, let's say a room or in a group. You can set up, yeah, you can set up a group here, you can share the device and, and so on. But I think, again, as I said in the beginning, the big selling point is in the smart, because if I want to set up a smart automation, let's say I want to create something new, and if we see what this device offers in terms of trigger conditions, so I click on plus, I say device, I say washing machine, then you have all these stuff. And that's one more thing why I mentioned in the beginning that uh, the on the software side it lists, looks a little bit unfinished first of all because well I understand what switch is so that's basically the state of the output I haven't figured out what countdown is and what add electricity is it doesn't really make sense but oops so you have current power and voltage that's straightforward you have a test bit what is it well it's not mentioned anywhere and then you also have this voltage coe coe electricity coe power coe electricity coe again so yeah, I don't know, it's coefficient or maybe it also measures apparent voltage and no, well, that's not it. It's apparent power and reactive power or power, I don't know. And again, it's, it's not mentioned in the documentation. I will try to get in touch with the manufacturer and if I get in response, then I will let you know. But I think just because we have current power and voltage, this, it is good enough for us. Honestly, I think, in most cases, power is just good enough to have it. So you can set up a automation which triggers if, let's say, the power is less than equal or greater than the power you have selected here. I mean, the slider goes all the way up to 5000 watts. So if you want to measure something small, then it gets really fiddly because it's, as you can see, I'm trying really hard to move it in small increments. So you just have to use the arrows. But Again, you set it up one time and then it's going to be working. So this is how a condition would look like if the power is less than 625.3 watts. And then of course on the condition, then the device, I mean, yeah, you, use, you, you would use the switch. So let's say you have a device that uh, is connected to this one and you just want to make sure that if the, well, 
let's use this because that's probably a more realistic scenario. So if whatever device that you have connected starts drawing more than 625 watts, then you are going to turn it off. So this can be, for example, a water pump that is uh, feeding water to your irrigation system. But let's say your uh, solenoids are not on and this pump is just pumping water and then the water doesn't go anywhere. Obviously, the, the power is going to rise quite quickly. So you just want to shut it down before uh, something gets damaged. So this is how a smart setting would look like for that particular scenario. And so I'm going to save this one. So what I wanted to show you is what I have done for this particular device for my washing machine. So I've created two automations for this one. The one is looking for the event when the washing starts and the other one when the washing completes. Because what I wanted to do is just to receive a notification if the wash washing has finished. So first what I do is I have this automation which says washing started and it's looking for, you know, continuously monitoring the power consumption and it looks for the event when the power goes above 200 watts. So 200 watts is usually when the heater comes on because that probably draws, uh, like, I don't know, 1500 watts or something like that. So if, um, if this happens, the washing is definitely, you know, in probably in the middle of the phase. Maybe when it's just pumping water and then turning the drum, it would consume less than 200, but let's say 200. So when I do that, uh, there is a functionality in Tuya that you can enable or disable an automation. So then I enable this washing completed automation. Because as you can see, the washing completed automation by default is not enabled. So you can see this slider is off, which means that by default, you know, normally this automation would not trigger because this automation is looking when the power is uh, power consumption is less than one watt. So if it goes above 200 watts and then, you know, the washing machine keeps, you know, working and then pumping water, heating, uh, turning the drum, in most probably while it is doing all these steps, even if it's idle, it's going to draw more than one watt. So by this automation, I'm looking for the event when the, 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 the machine completely turns itself off and then the power consumption dro uh, drops below one watt. And when that happens, I send a message. There is an option here for it says send notification and you only have one option here to send a notification to the message center. You don't specify a text. Basically the text is going to be the title of the automation. And then once this event is triggered, I'm also disabling this uh, washing completed event because you know, once the machine is off, the power is going to be less than one watt continuously. So I don't want to keep getting messages. And that's it. And I have to say, it looks really, really crude, but it seems to be working, at least with my washing machine. So I am getting a notification on my phone in the notification area that the washing has completed. And then I've tried it a few times and then it just automatically restarts. You know, the first automation enables the second one. And when the second one triggers the low consumption, it sends the notification and turns itself off or turns the automation off. And yeah, works like a charm. So with this device, you can set up this really, really simple notification, which I think it could be very useful in many different scenarios. And even though, you know, washing is probably a complicated cycle because the power goes up down, but with these two, it looks to be working quite reliably. So I'm quite happy with that. So this was my review of this Blitzwolf SHP2 smart plug for the Tuya system. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.